I think it's time we talk about where all these bones come from. So the reason you're not just a sad sack of skin on the ground is because of your skeleton. It's composed of 206 bones, which are all connected. There's a song about that, but you guys can sing it on your own time. You're a vertebrate because all of these bones rely on your spine, sending information from your brain to everything else. And you've got an endoskeleton because your bones are on the inside of your body. Here are some other dudes with skeletons like yours. Believe it or not, cats really are vertebrates despite having mostly fluid properties. But less than 5% of all animals are vertebrates. The rest are invertebrates, which I'm pretty sure is Latin for difficult to hug. Insects, crustaceans, and arachnids are all arthropods. They keep their guts on the inside of their body using a rigid armor shell composed of chitin. It's super strong. But with that strength comes a problem. Their skeleton doesn't grow flexibly like skin. So to grow, they have to crawl out of their old skeleton, leaving it behind by molding. The new skeleton is soft before it hardens, leaving them vulnerable and delicious. Snails have figured out an ingenious solution. They keep their skeletons on their back. It's a chitin skeleton reinforced with calcium carbonate, but their body is just cute goop. As a result, a snail can get a bigger shell by adding material to the world without having to shed anything. The hermit crab has a different approach. When it molts, it's as soft as a newborn and twice as ugly, but instead of staying around to get eaten, it moves into abandoned snail shells. As it grows, it needs larger and larger shells, but these crabs never need to grow their own back skeletons. And there's more. An earthworm has a hydrostatic skeleton composed of fluid pressure inside a special organ. This allows them to burrow easily without losing their shape. It also lets them heal much faster than harder skeleton people. The hydrostatic skeleton is what allows worms to regrow parts of their body you wouldn't even consider civilized. Anything with a shape tends to have a skeleton. So even though a jellyfish doesn't really have a brain to speak of, it has a hydrostatic skeleton. So does a sea anemone. At this point, you might think having a skeleton on the inside of your body makes you better than everyone else who doesn't. But don't judge a book by its cover. A sea cucumber has an endoskeleton, just like you. Thanks for watching, Defenders. We hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to watch next week's episode, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and use the link below to learn a lot more about some cool animals. See you guys later.